Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. And we get the back view of him. And I mean, it's just a mega. 52 yards is a long shot. Uh, Magnum P.I. is what yeah. we named him. No idea. Just what. a magnum. Yeah, just a magnum. Come on, Cam, last year we, we said probably 150, mid-150. Yeah. Same Doe from the morning come out with that nine-pointer. Here, here steps out this 90-inch eight point. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm like, okay, well, there's still a buck back there grunting. Yeah. And then I'll step like another 90-inch eight-pointer. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. You're like, I'm like, deer, right there. Yeah, like and he's 30 already yards. 30 yards. Yeah. He he was literally five yards from the base of the tree. Could have been had a buck down at 140 in the afternoon back there deep on public. Three does come out pretty early. It was like 245, 24 yard shot, sent the combat veteran. And I tell you what, man, dude, it just smoked. We always get so jacked up when the other person kills. It's just almost like we got it done. Yeah. And when you killed that doe, I was like, hell yeah, man. And we come down here to Missouri. My ass called me one more time. I'm like, is it a good buck? And he goes, yeah, real good, solid buck. I'm like, all right, boom. <laughs> and the deer just drops. For sure. Super special to me. Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. This is the Whitetail Legacy Podcast coming in your ear holes on this beautiful, hot-ass Wednesday. Um, it is brutally hot in Illinois. We're trying to get some stuff done, whitetail-oriented, but, man, it's, it's freaking rough. It's waking up at 545 to go out and get some stuff done. Um, me and Homie coming at you again. We had a badass episode lined up for you guys, and work schedule changed, and this one's coming right off the Richter recording the day before so um, we wanted to do a couple things in an episode anyway so we're going to get that chance now we're going to get into the people that make this possible and get into the show start off with the vip veteran broadhead combat veteran is available and also the two blade veteran is now 35 dollars. so if you guys have been wanting to try the two blade and haven't been wanting to pay that you know higher higher price for a broadhead 35 bucks is a very awesome reasonable price and uh, with the new lock rings on there, they're shooting awesome. And uh, we're shooting the combats, but shot the veterans for three years and had great success with them. You had the VIP shout-out. Yeah, this week's VIP shout-out is Jeff McKay. Jeff was in the Marines for 12 years. And uh, unfortunately, Jeff said he's having problems um, getting reintegrated back into normal life. But uh, he's working hard to get back at it. And he said hopefully this whitetail season will be the thing that helps him break through. So, Jeff... Uh, we're we're praying for you, man. Hopefully, you can get out there and uh, get your head clear, and you know, just enjoy life as you would want it to be. All right, ECW calls. Um, one thing I would like to mention is we did have some more people reach out to run some ad reads for people that are wanting to get some some uh, some info out about some stuff. So, um, ECW calls and Ingram still a huge part of this podcast, but we might be moving them to the end of the show if we do get. Um, more ad reads so we're not clogging up the front of the so you guys can get to the content quicker but ecw all your call all your custom call needs duck deer he's got it all um we appreciate jeff he's been with us for a very long time and uh helps pay the price to to uh host this podcast yeah. for you guys to have to find it so exodus do you have the exodus trail cam tip of the week yeah, this week's tip is, uh, you know, here this past week, we finally got the Exodus render out and up and going. And uh, one thing that's really cool about the Scout Tech app is I'm able to actually share that with up to 10 people um, for one cam or, you know, multiple cams. So you're able to share. And, you know, if just like we are now, we got it on a piece that Cody and I can both hunt so he can see all the pictures, even though he didn't buy the cam. So I think that's a very cool feature. And, uh, you know, if you're hunting a big piece, and, you know, say, hey, let's get five cams and you got 10 guys there. So you guys split it all up. And then, you know, everybody has access to all the pictures on the mobiles. And, you know, you can kind of break it up that way and maybe be able to get into or if you got a buddy that's wanting to get into a render, you know, you can be like, hey, I'll give you, a, you know, download the app, get all set up, 
you can check out my cam and you know just see how easy and convenient it is you know what's going on you don't have to be in there i think that's super cool we were talking about with our other cell cams we wish we could do that because in the past I'm like, I've sent it all the pictures to homie every day yeah. of what we got. You know, 507, I mean? Cody's texting me. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So trying to, you know, make sure he has the content or the intel, just like I had the intel. And Yeah, uh, there was two times, actually, you had sent a picture before I was going hunting. Um, I was driving to your house on October 12th. Chaos was out in the plot at 353. And then um, Bud Heavy was there, like... 4 30 mm-hmm. and then i ended up sitting all day and just barely missed him yeah so those uh those cell cams can be huge especially during season and uh, being able to just look at that content right away instead of me sending it to you or then maybe like you get eight pictures that you want to send and you only click six of them and then sometimes i'm like you got this pic you're like nah man i never even seen <laughs> right? that i'm like ah crap you know what i mean so or like you know if you're taking a day off like you're sleeping in or you got something going on with the family like i can just have that intel without having to rely on you or like if the deer's there at the stand you know i'd know to you know hold up or something so yeah yeah especially you could check it before you you know it's 10 30 and you're wanting to get down or something you'd be like oh crap maybe i shouldn't you know what I mean? right right so all right, Ingram's Outdoor Accession, all your taxidermy needs, um, ducks to deer to turkey, he's got you covered. Um, super excited to get our deer back this year from him. Like always, we told him to put him on the, the very end of the list. <laughs> he's a very busy man, father, taxidermist, husband, a lot of stuff going on. So uh, um, like I always tell homie, once you shoot him and you put him on your wall, you're like, oh, cool. But like, yeah. That it's just getting them, and then you're like, oh, okay, yeah. But now I'm just like, all right, just take your time. Because I know if I tell him to take his time, he's going to do a better job. You know what I mean? So, right. so that's the way I look at it. But we're excited to get our bucks back from him. Um, he's been cranking out a lot of bucks. He sent me four or five pictures. <clears throat> he did a really cool, like he did that lick neck one. Oh, yeah. The Where his neck was turned all around licking. But this one, he just, it was just a hard turn looking back. Ooh. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm sure there was a bunch of cuts in that. Oh, yeah. But, uh, all right, well, that's it, guys. Um, We're going to get into the content here. Like I said, this is going to be me and homie. We wanted to do a couple things in an episode, and we feel like before season is the right time to do it. And the big thing is is we want to thank you guys, the listeners, the supporters. Um, I feel like there's a lot of podcasts out there, and there's a lot of whitetail podcasts out there, and we have a very dedicated group of listeners that for some reason like to listen to me and homie talk (laughs) because we don't have a ton of knowledge man we're learning right here with you guys when we're talking to these guys um on you know when we have guests on and uh that's what we started the podcast for and now um we feel obligated to get it out because there's so many people that are waiting to to click that button so just a huge shout out to you how long we've been doing this homie two and a half years two and a half so two and a half years to have a steady number of listeners as we do, I'm I'm blown away by it. You know what I mean? Because me and homie talk about it. We're not Red Arrow. We're not Bill Dance. We're not someone that has like <laughs> a rec. You know a a reputation of you know even killing big deer. We've had some success, but we don't feel like we deserve as much as we're getting because we we're just two got nobodies right you know yeah. what i mean so yeah. i know that you've said that multiple times yeah like, and it's just come up in conversation like you know i try to venture out off my normal beaten path of listening to episodes of different podcasts and stuff and you know i'll, I'll just come across a random one and i'll just be like you know why would why would somebody listen to this guy like it's just you know just like me and you it's just you know another guy you know with the show and um you just like what that that's a good question to ask like why you know yeah. And uh, it kind of gets you and I thinking about, you know, what we're doing and, you know, that where we're trying to go and do everything. And just like Cody said, um, means the world to us. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, every week it's Wednesday, 11 a.m., you know, the episode's out, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, with us being dads and as much as we work, the schedule for this <laughs> is sometimes like I was gonna say, ridiculously we, complicated. Yeah. Like, and then. You know, going back to it, we're just a couple of no-name guys, so we have a few people reach out to come on the podcast, but almost everybody is us reaching out, finding these, you know, n- unknown guys that are killing giants year after year, uh, whether it be public, private, whatever they got going on, they are doing something different than the other 90% of the guys out there because they're consistent on big, giant whitetails, you know what I mean? And, right. And uh, 
us being nobodies, it's one we got to convince them to come on. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes, you know. Like, oh, what you got going on over there, They're man? like, yeah, uh, what, what's whitetail? Uh, what do you got going on? I've never heard of that. You know, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm not wired to hunt, man. Yeah. I know. I apologize. But uh, but once they come on, they have a blast. They realize that. We're, they're, we're, they're like, when's the next one? Yeah. They're like, oh, if you need me to come on again, let me know. And, yeah. And that's cool. And, and we hope that you guys enjoy these stories from the nobodies because that's what we started the podcast for a long time ago is, we wanted a podcast with nobodies on it, like people that weren't in the hunting industry, people that weren't big time filmers. It's awesome to listen to those guys, you know, talk about how they kill deer and their strategies. But it's hard. It's it's hard to relate a lot of times, and I feel like a lot of the same people are on the same podcast over and over and over. And mm-hmm. they're they're amazing hunters. Not knocking them at all. They're they obviously are doing something different. But once you've heard what they got to say two or three, four times, you know, um, you pretty much got what what they what they're what they're going with. You know right, what I mean? Right. So, um, but, I think I think one of the common themes that I think about is you know just like how me and you are pretty much always you know whitetail oriented. You know, fifty weeks out of the year, two weeks turkey hunting. You know, other than that, we're pretty much full go on the whitetail. And I think a lot of people, like people that we find and people that are successful year after year are like that too, mm-hmm. but they just don't have like that group of like six, eight dudes to just go out there and just get stupid and just go hard all the time, yeah. all season, you know? And it, I think that's something that, you know, when we do get somebody on here and they, you know, and they find out it's a good time and you know the before bullshit the after bullshit and uh you just get to talk hunting with somebody who loves it as much as you do and you know drives for success each year and you know sets goals and tries to achieve them and does everything they can to get to them and they just don't have that you know and i think that's why you know people like oh yeah you know i'll come on and then when they come on they're like hell yeah you know that was fun yeah i mean everybody likes to tell their story and uh, if you guys don't know, you know, if you guys notice, we try not to interrupt people when they're on here. We try to, we always say, it's our podcast, this is your episode, we can talk about whatever you want. Yeah. You're giving us the content and the time in your life to come on. So uh, we just let them rip, you know what I mean? And most of the time when we let people rip, that's the good ones, when they're just going and going and we don't have to kind of coax them along, you know right. what I mean? But. Um, it just goes back to you guys. You are the reason that we keep doing this. You know what I mean? Um, and just a huge thank you to everybody that supported us. Bought a hat, a shirt. We sold a shit ton of stuff. Um, we got some new stuff coming out that's mm-hmm. going to be a little funny. Um, hopefully everybody likes it. <laughs> we'll see. It'll be a little closer to season. But um, just, you know, we said it quite a bit at the beginning. We just haven't said it for a while. We've been trying to get good, solid whitetail content to you guys. And, uh, you know, you know who you are, the dedicated listeners and all of our super solid friends that we made from this podcast. My contacts list is four times as big yeah, as what it normally is. And I talk to people weekly because of this podcast. So, all right, now that's out of the way. Um, here is the biggest info we got for you guys. We have got a new property. <laughs> we picked up another property this year, um, one that we were wanting to get a little, <laughs> a little <laughs> messed up. Like everything that I do is like ten percent from failing. Yeah. Like it's ninety percent fail, ten percent gonna happen. If it has anybody from Whitetail Legacy yeah. associated with it, it's, it's a complete a shit disaster. Show. Yeah, it's a <laughs> shit show. <laughs> but somehow we just pull it out. But um so I tell homie, I said, Hey, I've got this guy, he's you know, he's wanting to lease. This is the property. <laughs> we look at it. Oh yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Cool. You know, and we're like, all right, you know, we'll go out there, we'll check it out and you know, we'll talk to him. Go to talk to the guy to sign the paperwork. Not even the right property. <laughs> <laughs> he sold it in February. So when I had talked to him about leasing it, he still had owned it. But then he had sold it in February, and he's an older guy, and he said, oh, yeah, I don't own that anymore. I was like, what? <laughs> All right, so uh, here we go. But uh, we had wanted to kind of double down and get both. I mean, you know you're I mean? there with money in hand, yeah, ready to go. Ready lease to agreement, go. Yeah. you're ready to rip. Yeah, I got the lease agreement. <laughs> Um, if anybody needs a lease agreement, me and homie have typed up a pretty solid one. 
um, you can get on our email and we can send it to you. Um, pretty standard what everybody, all the landowners want to know. I mean, that's something you Google. It's hard to find one, man. Yeah. And it's something that I tried to make and me and homie legally words are correct yeah. and there's clause in there that we can't sue them. There's a clause in there for liability insurance and all, all the stuff that they want to see, right? You know, no crop damage, farming comes first, all that good stuff. So if you guys would like that, um, you can hit us up on our email and we can send that out to you guys. Um, but I'm there when the COVID's going on, you know what <laughs> I mean? And this guy's in a nursing home. So we this has been going for what, like six months? I've been it's like, been, yeah, it's- and can't, can't get up there. And he's finally like, yeah, you know, we can meet up. He's like, I'll have to meet you outside. I'm like, that's cool. Because wasn't it last year we were trying to get the piece on the south of that? And yeah. then you had kind of seen the north piece, and you're like, well, shit, we can get on yeah. that, you know? And the south piece didn't work out. Yeah. But. The south piece was a yes, and then three weeks later it was, <laughs> ah, no. I'm like, oh, man, yeah. that's that was that was heartbreaking. That was prime time. And But, uh, yeah, so I, you know, go to the nursing home and uh, – and talked to the guy, awesome dude, um, real down to earth, fell into some bad luck, not his fault at all. Um, people are brutally mean sometimes, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And uh, it seems like people take care or take advantage of elderly people all the time. And, you know, he was real, he'd, he'd lease before I could tell because he was looking for all that stuff. I was reading it with him. He was, you know, reading through it and he was looking. And when I said one of the key you know, the key things you need in there, a light bulb would go off and you'd do the finger point like, <laughs> yep, 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 that, yep, that, Gotta that's, have what that. I, that's what I like. And I was like, all right, this is going good, you know, because this is the first time I talked to the guy on the phone, you know, and this is the first time I had actually met the guy even. Oh. So, um, or outside the nursing home with mask on trying to t- do Gosh. a lease agreement. <laughs> Absolutely brutal, you know what I mean? And I'm trying to keep my distance a little bit, you know what I mean? And of course, being a dad, I got my wife and kids that they had to come because we're getting ice cream afterward, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so uh, he's, you know, he's wanting to chat. I ended up chatting with him like an hour and a half. I told my wife, I said, just go get the ice cream, come back. You know, he's, he said that he's been up there for six months and he's not able to leave. He's just locked in that nursing God, home. That's tragic. Like and that he was is... a farmer before. He used to going outside, getting on a side by side, driving around, checking on cows, and now he can't even leave the nursing home, you know? Can't even go for a walk around town, he said. Wow. And I know they're trying to do the right thing protecting you know, protecting them because they're immune deficient, mm. you know what I mean, right. when they get older, but uh it's brutal in there, you know what I mean? So I told him I said, Hey, another month or two I'm gonna come up here. Ask him what his favorite flavor of ice cream was. I said that I would, the kids were going to get ice cream. He's like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. I'm like, oh, I get it. I get the hint, yeah, man. Right. <laughs> I'll be up here in a month with some ice cream. We'll chit-chat again, see how you're doing. But uh, I just, it's very hard to find ground around our area, even to lease. It's like, I don't have a name that's well-known around here. Homie don't have a name that's family knows from family family and you yeah. just say the name they're like oh yeah i knew your dad i went to high school with your grandpa or something you know what i mean that, that that doesn't happen to me so for me to get a yes i'm like oh we gotta go for it so we got a huge piece it's <laughs> i don't even know how many acres it's too many know, yeah, to count to, yeah it's giant for us it's it's got to be 200 <laughs> plus right right and we're used to hunting like 40 but the kicker is <laughs> <laughs> and this is the kicker. There's like three acres of timber on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's four money draws <laughs> that connect two incredible pieces of ground. Bro, there might be a fucking murder hornet in oh, here. Oh, God. <laughs> There's four draws. Yeah, that's a oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> There's four draws that connect two pieces of prime ground and we got those four jaws right and a ton of field <laughs> maybe 40 trees we can get a stand yeah, in. yeah. Ma- maybe <laughs> yeah not very many trees we can get a stand in um but uh did get to shed hunt it a couple years ago found some absolute banger sheds found an 80 inch clean five side um so you're talking a booner is that that one yeah right there yeah i'll let you hold it while we're talking all right yeah, so that was two years ago. Yeah, yeah so 
a five side with like not even another scoreable point on it, 10 inch brows, 13, 14 inch twos. The threes are longer than the twos. They're probably 14, 15 inches. They curl in huge main beams, just a giant deer. And then I found a seven, a clean seven point side. That was probably 130 class, 140, and then a match set 139 inch nine pointer. Um, all on this property that we just p- picked up. And there used to be a little more timber to it, but he had fell, fallen in bad luck, like we'd said, and he had sold the south piece, so he wasn't able to get that. That's still, I'm going to try to yeah. get the numbers and make the communication. But uh, anyways, we have these four draws, right? And they're, what are they, maybe 60, 70 yards wide? Yeah. Thick thick timber where there's where they are. But it just connects ground that we know where giants are and connects ground where we know where giants are. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And that is it. And there's no other way for them to get from that piece to the other piece without going on one of these four locations. Yeah. So it's literally a 25% shot <laughs> <laughs> that we picked the right draw that day. You know what I mean? And um, with all the field, um, we really needed something late season. That's where we, like, after late shotgun season even our deer are gone Mm -hmm. on the other piece it's just like they just vanish and i don't know if it's i mean it's 40 acres of grass and cedars you think that and we got a bean plot there you think uh, you would have thought the plot would have helped you think that deer would just hold there but they just don't i don't know what it is and i like i said where i shot freeze is like three quarters a mile south of there mm-hmm. i think they just all go down there oh, and that's yeah. why i got so many random bucks there in the rut i'd be like oh this is the seventh deer that i don't even know what is going was on. going on and it's coming through this property you know what i mean so i think all the deer that are up there just flush down there because there is a lot of ag down there yeah there is a ton of ag down there and way more timber that's like one of yeah. the biggest timber blocks in our county you know what i mean so i feel like they just push south and all go down there you know what i mean so that's what we wanted we wanted some late season stuff but we have four prime rut funnel pinches on this property early season we have no idea what's going to happen on it nope. absolutely no idea we have hung two sets in one where i found the giant shed which is i think that's a perfect pinch north and south and east and west right there you found that right on the i found dam. that right on the dam damn yeah Laying right out there in the open, right That's by crazy. that scrape, crazy. where those scrapes were. And then we hung a stand. There's one giant walnut tree <laughs> and a waterway, and it's right in the corner, low side of a field. Um, if you were a, 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 I've never killed a buck in a field I, edge. I was thinking that while we were hanging that stand. Yeah. I was like, Cody's finally going to kill a deer in the field, hopefully. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like I've never, I've killed a doe on a clover plot and stuff, but I've never killed a buck in a field like you see it on tv all the time right deer society there's just 200 (laughs) inch running across right out in the 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 hell i'm like this is not even reality to me (laughs) like i don't i don't even know that the deer exist in fields you know what i mean but late season i know they're out there so we're hoping we got enough food and with all those sheds i found the potential should be there that those deer are using that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and the piece that we have is all corn and then the piece to the south that we don't have is beans right now. And the piece to the north that borders ours is, is beans. beans. Yeah. And we do have that one patch of timber that you haven't been to yet that might be like two acres that's on the north. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I said we could pack and hunt. Is it beans? That's it's beans, too. right on the edge of beans yeah. and corn. Yeah, okay. so split. But, uh, yeah, so next year, early season, probably fire. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you got all those beans. beans yeah. This year, being corn, I mean... If I see a big deer this time of year, it's in the beans, straight up. You know right, what I mean? So, right. um, but yeah, this is huge for us being small dick hunters. You know what I mean? Small property. We're used to little dinky spots. Um, we're going to have to hunt out of a blind, though. I feel like it's going to come down to that. Yeah, and it's, where, are you, where are you thinking about putting that at? I don't. I, I like that corner across from the walnut tree. So, it'd be the north northwest corner up so the where the walnut tree stand is is there's a main field and where the draw comes in 
it goes in and there's a huge block of timber right there with a draw and the fence line is the timber Mm -hmm. like and then to the north of that maybe a hundred yards of timber and then the fence line going north and south is the is the tree line but i think if we got back in that corner because that's where i found that uh right in that corner was where i found that clean seven side so but the wagon blind is up and getting rebuilt right now so if the beans are phenomenal on kings which they look better than last year when yeah they're they, out there. they was looking pretty good the other day but if they're absolutely phenomenal and there's deer using them i'm gonna leave the wagon blind there but if not <clears throat> shotgun season we get a cold front that thing's getting drug out in that field and if that ground's frozen i'm dragging it right out there in that cornfield and watching watching that corner i was say, and there is just random rusted farm equipment all everywhere. over the place yeah everywhere. north south middle behind his house yeah, yeah i mean it's everywhere yeah so it's just going to be another yeah it's just going to be they won't even realize oh the it. farmer just drug this in here today yeah. no big deal <laughs> i mean yeah there's stuff all over the place yeah so. we got trail cams out there does walking <laughs> right past old equipment campers and all kinds of stuff so um that is an option um, we're not used to hunting out of blinds at all. Um, no, and I got one, and it's got a jacked up side, like Ingram's blind did turkey yeah. hunting. But we made it work. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I just don't know about bow and a. Hey, we yeah. might just have to buy a real solid blind. I think, I think if the bow hunter was in the middle and the camera guy was kind of scrunched, yeah, in the back, you're just work. gonna have to, you're yeah. just gonna have to make it. I feel like that's what it's gonna come down to. We're gonna find a giant that's using that field late season. We're just gonna have to go in there and. If we can't get the wagon blind in there, because I feel like you can pull that wagon blind in there, and the yeah. next day they're like, oh, okay, cool, there's an auger wagon out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Deer are used to seeing that, but uh, the pop-up blind, I just feel like deer see them a mile away. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we were doing tur- that turkey hunt, and the <sighs> rain was just blasting off that thing. <laughs> that doe was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, she was 400 yards. Yeah, she was like, I ain't going over there. You know what I mean? She- <laughs> Walk out in the field, just look right at us. I'm like, what in the <laughs> hell? Like, I couldn't kill a deer in this thing if I life depended on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, we got more to learn is what we're saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're going to have to figure out some ground blind. We need to have someone come on that's a ground blind specialist and talk to us about, you know. You need to have Tex back on and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's all he does. Yeah, pretty much. So. Um, I was going to say something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, another year and another new property for us to learn. So um, that's something that, that's really kind of exciting to me because, I mean, last year, well, two two years ago, mm-hmm. two years ago, we picked up the first private piece that we got. And then last year I got onto the public ground. Yeah, trying then, to figure it out. You know, this year. So um, it's very exciting to me to be able to get a new new place to hunt and try to figure it out. I know there's not a lot of, you know, locating pinches and funnels i mean the funnels are right there you know yeah I mean, you, you can't you like can't. you can uh, you a blind guy can read this map <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a funnel right there yes. you know what i mean like there's no denying it right but you know as far as like being in the hardwood timber like you know on the private piece we have now you know you know it's, it's not like that but yeah. it's still you know be out there be attentive see what the deer are doing and you know if you have to make a move on them because yeah. you're we put up stay in a July 5th, you know, mm-hmm. so you have yeah. no idea. Where, yeah. that's I have literally no spot. idea. You know what I mean? We just, I just have so many stands in my garage. I'm <laughs> You're like, like, I got to get this shit out I'm of like, here. Yeah. Let's get, let's get at least some of this out of here. <laughs> but, but, uh, I just put them in spots that I'm like, okay, we can access this easy. We can hunt here and see a long ways mm-hmm. and make adjustments from there. Yeah. And I said, a lot of this is going to be pack and hunt. That's, you know, I said, a lot of this is going to be, we're going to hunt this pre-hung set. Oh, shit, we need to be 300 yards this way. Yeah. Let's pack in and make a move. You know what I mean? And, uh, and during the rut, I wouldn't be against taking our pack-in sets and setting them at the bottom of the tree just in case midday or 10 o'clock we're like, all right, we need to move here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just to have them there. But, That's not a bad idea. And then another thing is like, it's not a mile and a half deep also you know and it's not seven ravines deep you know what i mean (laughs) so with our private with our public being cut off with goose hunters late season it's it gives us the option to 
another place to go and another place that isn't we don't have to wake up at 4 a.m to get to yeah i mean so if you're running late boom you could be in that walnut tree in 10 minutes you know just rip right along that field edge boom you're in yeah you know what i mean so So. i was that yeah yeah well do you think how you when the field comes out what do you how do you think you access that still walk the north edge or right across that field i was just 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 in case something was in that that yeah yeah. because if I mean, you'll have the wind, but yeah. just thinking if you walk to that, yeah. Never know what's going to be bedded in those. Yeah, especially at that time. <clears throat> yeah. You know, that's Being a perfect some, place for a buck to push a doe. Yeah, away some from, bullshit bush, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of rubs along that edge, like something got pushed up in there. So yeah. I think, you know, daylight, cruise right across that field. Hit that telephone pole. I feel like it's going to be a, a evening spot, October, all day, and late season. And then during the rut, I feel like it's just... You're just looking for that lucky pinch, so you're yeah. just sitting all day and yeah, waiting for it to happen. Definitely you know I mean? going to be that. So, but, but uh, um, we do have a lot of time dedicated during the rut on public. Mm-hmm. So we're take you're taking vacation starting Halloween. Yep. Yep. Me too. And then be are you taking two two weeks? A week and then four days. A week and four days. So f- for two weeks, I'm taking yeah. two weeks. I'm just yeah, taking a floater. A, yeah. J- don't even get. Don't even pay me, bro. I'm so that gone. that would cover me the first shotgun, right? No, oh, I don't think man. so. I think it's the week before. It's tough. That's tough. I'll double check here. Real Are you quick. taking two straight weeks, Bo? I'm taking two straight weeks again. <sighs> All but, Bo. But I'm not gonna be able to hunt October seventeenth. I'm not gonna be able to hunt Halloween evening. Yeah, Halloween dead evenings. giveaway. Yeah, I'm dadding up hardcore. And that then night. November seventh, I'm not gonna be able to hunt the evening. So I got three out of four weekends for Laffy Taffy on (laughs) all week, (laughs) right? So three out of four weeks, I'm not gonna be able to hunt a Saturday evening. Yeah, but then it'll be, we'll be rolling right into vacation there. Yeah. Um, and thanks. Yeah, shotgun's twenty first, so we ain't gonna make it. No, no floater that Friday. We ain't gonna make it. Brutal. It worked out for you last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I killed all. I killed freeze on Saturday. Yeah. I kill. I don't kill the first day of gun season. No. Nope. <laughs> I got to let them get stirred up. <laughs> <laughs> really push something out to me to make it happen. Yeah. But. So have you? I know we don't have this on the notes, but um, have you been thinking of like any goals or um, anything like that yet? I want to kill shit on film. I want to get better at that. Good goal. And then. I want to kill something on that piece of public just because I've been s- three years in a row. Have you killed anything out there? No. Nothing? Not killed, even, no does? No, nope, nothing? No. I won't. I, I nah, mean, we could have killed those. I could have yeah. killed plenty. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. every, every year, I'm literally as close as you can get uh, from killing a giant. Right. And not killing them. <laughs> and it's devastating. It's like you are right there, like, on the edge, five yards, ten yards, he's in the brush. Something dumb happens every year. And I feel like now, our strategy this year on there, and what we know, this is this is the year, I yeah. hope. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? like, come on, man. You got to, I mean, I got to get it together sometime. You know what I mean? So, and uh, like I said, my October is is all all day right there. Unless... The other piece that we're going to talk about in a minute, the camp just says, "Here I am." <laughs> you know what I mean, because I know there's, I know there's big good deer on I that. I say, too. I feel like that has the opportunity to happen too. Yeah, I feel like too. I feel like that's hidden enough, that no one really knows what's going on up there. Not any deer hunters on it. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, what's what's the goals for you? You got any? Uh, I haven't organized them yet, as far as like number them of like what I want to tackle first, but. Definitely a buck on public is up there. Um, just absolute drilling the shit out of a buck where I should hit him with a bow, yeah. you know, just like I shot that doe. You know, I just a nice, clean shot, no bullshit. You know, you, you go up and you get a walk up to him in two hours. You know, that's that's very important to me and uh, something I'm working on now, shooting my bow in the summertime, as as I did last year, of course. Um, and then like, th- those are the two that are really, really on me. Just make yeah. it a good shot and try to get one. Yeah. For some reason, I, I really want to kill West side. Yeah. I would really like to kill that deer. I feel like he's like nine. I know. 
and he's just, you know, I got more history with Magnum. Right. You know what I mean? But I just feel like that deer's, and he got me last year. He caught me standing up. You know what I mean? So I'm like, <laughs> oh, this mother. The only deer we see all day is an absolute monarch. <laughs> right. First thing in the morning, homie oh, goes, dude. giant buck, giant buck, 50 yards. And I'm like, okay, can I stand up? No response. <laughs> I stand up. He's like, he gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Guys, it was like absolutely the best lighting you've ever seen in your life for a deer to come out. Like the sun's real orangey. It's got a nice frost everywhere. Like it is just absolute primo. And if you film or think about filming, literally every primo shot is where you can't get the camera. Something's going to, yeah. it happens too fast or you can't move or there's something in the way or something. Yeah. Oh man, it was it was going to be dynamite is what it was going to be. And it was going to be a 11-yard shot. Yeah, he was going to go right through oh, that pinch. Man. But I think he got on the ground scent. Yeah, I, I, th- I think I think he got on the ground scent too because he came in right where we walked right through. Where, right where we If we had been on that other tree, he probably would have walked right in front of us. Yeah. And he, he probably busted out that way or something dumb. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, just he's just a – he's a one of the heaviest deer we have on camera for sure. Yeah. A 10-pointer with fours that are like... I keep thinking he's an 8. He's a 10, man. His fours are just <laughs> like 2 inches. You know right? what I mean? <laughs> 2 inches real thick. <laughs> he threw him on late last year is yeah. the problem. Yeah. And uh, he's probably like 26 wide. Oh. Just, yeah, I mean, he's just retarded wide and and uh, short time. Not going to score. We're going to get him mounted with an oversized load yeah. <laughs> banner. Yeah. yeah, he's not going to score very good. No. But he... You know, he got us last year. And like, like I said, I stood up slow. There was a ton of cover in between me and him. Yeah. I was on the opposite side of the tree. but And it was really windy, too. The way that you sat, said, I never even got to see him. No, because so, I was standing up with my face to the tree trying to keep the wind at my back. Yeah. And it was blowing, you know, 90 degrees in front of him. It was blowing across his face. But he's still way, he's still 50 yards behind us to even yeah. get to us before he gets to the wind. And I just, you know, look over. I'm like, holy shit, like giant right there. And he's just standing right there in the nice little clearing right there. I'm like, oh, dude, dude's going to come right on this road. It's, yeah. it's going to be sick. It's literally exactly what we planned to happen. Yeah. It was like, yeah. oh, yeah, he's going to come right through here. It's going to be sweet. No. Nope. Like, there's a giant right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, can I stand up? Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was trying to look back yeah. over at him. Like, yeah, oh, like, my God. oh, I don't know. Like, I don't want to take my eyes off. Because you had to turn your head all the way to, like, whisper to me, like, hey. Yeah, it was, you know, giant. 180 from the complete right to the complete left to w- yeah. be able for you to hear me. So, I'd really like to kill him. Um, and like you said, it, he walked right where we walked in. Yeah. And that ground scent game, once you see yourself get busted by a possum with rubber boots on, you're like... <laughs> Every deer in here is gonna bust me. You know what I mean? And and it, I mean that's as deep as we can go. Yeah. And you're sweating your balls off by the time yeah, you get back there's there. There's just no way to get no around way around it. it. And I mean, take an extra twenty minutes. But unless then, we go in in boxers and we get across a ravine, we get dressed. I'll was, still be sweating. I was, well, I was just saying, by the time you get to the tree, you still be sweating. I, my legs, my legs would be so full of cockaburs. I wouldn't even. But bro, on October twelfth, we could barely get out yeah, of the damn truck. I know. <laughs> that's true. We're a little better shape this year, so hopefully... I was going to say, I was going to hit that at the end. Yeah, hopefully it's a little better, but yeah, we can hit that at the end. Uh, let's get into... Okay, we covered the new property. You guys, it's four draws. It's a big piece. There is goose hunters How on it. How long do you think it is? Like, It's long. I don't half know. Half mile? Yeah, it's long. Maybe a little longer? Yeah, so it's... so there's a lot of field there. Yeah. And uh, it we're, like I said, we're trying to learn it. We got cams out there. We got stands hung. We're going to move stuff. I don't feel like early season with any beans on it, there's going to be anything on it. You know what I mean? The rut's going to be prime. Late season is going to be good um, just by the sheds that we got. But So that's the big info. The wagon blind is the next big info. We got it up, getting rebuilt, Not barely got it up. If you want to see it coming up, check out our in- Instagram or Facebook. R- on the edge of destroyed. <laughs> I mean, it's close. Like I said, everything is... 10% from being a complete disaster if you do it with me. So, all right. Um, oh, and the uh, next piece of intel is the bean plot is in. Shout out to Zach Page and Logan. Um, huge, 
huge shout out to them. Bean plots in, it's looking great. Wagon blinds on at moved locations. We're going to plant a late season plot on the top, close to the wagon blind. Hopefully, hold some deer on this piece. Something we didn't have the option. Yeah. I mean, no. We're always trying to try something new. What will work? What will work? You think you see that acre bean field on TV? You're like, oh, this is money. There's deer mm-hmm. all over it. Nothing. Nothing on it. There's the beans in February on that thing, and we're not hunting that property a lot. They're just like, we're out. We're out. We're going south. I was gonna say I hunted it three days. I didn't hunt it at all late season. No, no. I, mobile cams on it. I did second season shotgun. Yeah, mobile cams on it all the time. Scouting from the road. Just random buck come yeah. through at eleven at night. Yeah, just just randomness. Nothing going on. Um, you know, what I mean, didn't but, we put two cams on the plot late? Mm-hmm. One yeah. on. One on the yeah. bottom. One on the top. Yeah. See. So. So hopefully with that late season mix up there, we can get something to stay you know and we have our dove slash late season deer plot in also um we planted a dove field maybe like a half acre um tried out the real world uh i don't even know it's over there in the corner their bird mix it's got beans in it though then there's a lot of have you checked on it yeah there's a lot of beans in it nice so and it looks good how big is that because kind of go through that little nugget of property like how is how big is that the property is huge but, oh, okay. You wanted yeah. them again? All yeah, right. the property is like Yeah, because it has all that. that, that but that it has ag. maybe two and a half acres of timber on it. Okay, all right. Have killed deer on it. Have killed does you on have it. Killed? Yes. Oh, nice. And got pictures of giant bucks yeah, on it. Yeah, I know it. that. But I, I go back again. You know, it's like you just got to be there when they're there because it's small. You know what yeah. I mean? So, and a lot of early yeah, shit on there, too. A lot too. of early stuff. So, But I think that. Those beans late season, will it work? I don't know. My plan is to go in there after dove season and spray everything, and the beans won't die. You know what I mean? Right. They're already yeah. turning. And leave, let, just let the beans stand, you know? But it's got sunflowers in it, Milo, raw. It's got a lot of stuff in it, and we'll see what happens. Like I said, it's a kill birds on. If, it's if not kill deer. But. I would say, if you're hearing a common theme is we need some late season yeah, hunting. <laughs> we need some late, like our late season is brutal. Trash. Yeah, it's abs- like I ran multiple cams on the suburban public last year. Got some bucks, but just nothing that was like, you know, you always hear that late season deer always coming to this field. You know, we're moving on and we're getting closer. We don't, we never have anything like yeah, that. Yeah, Matt and Jesse, like that. Yeah. that's like. TV shit, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, he's, he's been in this field four nights. They just come come yeah. over here, and I'm like, man, yeah. that's crazy. Move the move the blind the same day, yeah, and, and get it kill done. Him. You know what I mean? So that's something that we want because everybody talks about how good late season. That's you know best time to kill a buck. You know, blah 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 blah. He's patternable. Yeah, earlier or late. Earlier we don't have late. we don't have that. You know what I mean? So something that we're trying to improve, and this is the steps that we're going through to improve it. All right. Um, second. Oh yeah, second, second public. <laughs> um, so I did some digging, and I found about this other public that's, man, it's weird too. It's absolutely, it's, it's like Kansas. Yeah, it's <laughs> giant. It's I don't even know. I mean, it's got to be six hundred plus, seven hundred acres plus, but it's just grass, <laughs> lots of grass and hi- hills that you can barely walk up, and. Um, I went out there. I was like, you know what? Uh, if we if there's a common theme on this podcast, it's don't overlook the the spots. Yeah. You know, if you think it's bullshit, there's probably a giant there. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, timber to the north, timber to the south, six hundred acres of grass. <laughs> you know, what I mean, bunch it's, of no hunting across the yeah, road. Bunch of no hunting across the road that is grass. A <laughs> uh, guy on the north killed a giant, like 187 yeah. or something, yeah. two years ago. The guy on the ago. north killed a mega giant. So I was like, I want to walk this. I did some research. To hunt it, you got to go through a second party to get a permit to hunt it. And then you get the permit. And then the rules for the deer hunting are different than the other hunting. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it is confusing as hell. I end up having to call someone and be like, all right, can I do this? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, great. But it's from here to here yeah this time to this time yeah so um that's that's only for the birds oh it is yeah oh okay all right so a lot of geese hunters around our area you know what i mean so 
Um, Ruining everything. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's another property that's uh, dedicated to the birds, and this one's a little farther than the other one, um, so it's gonna be a little more drive time, and uh, but I walked it, found a pretty solid dead buck, and found a real solid shed. Um, found a area where a bunch of ground scrapes, tree rubs, one really good bedding area where there's like it looks like doe bedding to me there's hair all over six eight beds real close together like literally the only spot of timber you know one of the only spot of timbers in like a low spot draw i'm like god oh, this just creek draw i'm like this just screams bedding you know for this yeah. area um found a pinch went to that pinch there's another tree with like five scrapes under it i'm like all right this looks like the area walking around turn to look to the right boom there's that shed i'm like all right so everything's coming together i'm like i like this area it looks good you can see a long ways to make moves might be another one of those where we do some radical ground hunting i feel like if a guy went in on the north and a guy went in on the south I and mean, just walk that edge whoever bumps the deer whoever first the other guy's the killing <laughs> you know what i mean got a got a chance so um might be it's just another one of those pieces where very few people hunting because mm-hmm. they don't know that you can deer hunt it. You right. know what I mean? Right. Because there's literally, you drive up to the sign, nothing about deer hunting. Literally zero about deer hunting. So you just got to call and ask and go to this website and get this thing and then call the number that's on that thing <laughs> <laughs> to get the intel. And uh, it's all beans. The, the the right next to it, it's all beans. And I drove past it the other night. There's four does out there. Mm. And... uh I didn't stay very long, had the kids in the back, you know, swing by, hit the spotting scope out the window, four right. does, swing by, go, you know, check the private piece on the way back home. And uh, it looks like it's got potential. We're going to get a couple cams out there. We'll let you guys know what's going on. But it's another one of those things. We're just trying to take the intel that we've got from this podcast that we're learning right along with you guys and everybody's like, ah, man, it was this spot that no one was thinking about or it was a spot that I really didn't, you know, even think about. And then a lot of times I go back to when Mark Jury killed that giant. He's like, man, he's been here the same place probably for four years and I've overlooked this spot. And mm-hmm. Then I go in there, it pulls a blind right into <laughs> the center of it and kills him, you know what I mean? Yeah. So those spots... There's deer on it. I know there's deer on it. There's deer sign on it. What caliber deer? No idea. I know the shed is going to be a shooter this year. I know the buck that I found was right on the edge of a shooter that was dead. You know what I mean? So it, it's got the potential to have that kind of deer on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. And we know what the guy killed. Yeah. And it's another late season option. It's another option for us to run cams and a buck just daylight for no reason. You think they'll leave them beans or they'll, they'll pick them beans? They'll pick the beans, yeah. Um, but. Is that still, that's private over there, though? Yeah, the north is private. There's no. no to the, the east. The east. Is that, because yeah. that's where the beans are. No, right? the, yeah, yeah, to yeah. the east, yeah. Okay, yeah. And the, it's private, too. Yeah, it's all okay. private. There's no ag on this at all. Right. It's all grass. Grass, ponds, and some cottonwoods <laughs> <I'm saying. laughs> so and that's where we'll be in you know what i mean some cottonwood trees we'll have a stand in but uh maybe thinking a little decoy in action in there man i feel like that's another good north south pinch in the rut never know bow hunt it during shotgun season maybe i think that'd be i was talking to nick about that the other day all them guys that yeah. sunday of uh first season i know they all push that north I know everybody that hunts it. Does uh it don't have a it does it close? It don't close. Don't close. Okay. So second season I know they push it again. So no telling what they could push down in there on you. Right. You know what I mean? So and then once they push that it might just make something and I did bump a turkey off of it this winter oh. when I was when I was uh, a Tom too, when nice. I was scouting it. So um, they did do some burning on it and burned out some of the brush closer to the road, but I don't know what they've done in the back. So need to get out there and scout it a little bit. But really easy to access with the bikes again. You can only park in one spot. We'll have to bike down the road like a mile right down the gravel road. It's flat, though. 
it's downhill on the way, uphill on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> so so when prime. you don't see shit and then you're feeling down, you have to <laughs> you, bike out uphill. uphill. Yeah, Perfect. I'll probably just let you get the truck. I'll just hang out there, you know, yeah. watch the bikes. <laughs> but, no. uh, yeah, and then it's maybe like a half mile in from the where we'll park the bikes. Wow. Going to try to get permission on the private. I do know who owns that just to walk it they're not real big on deer hunters um but i think they got that grass buffer from the field to the timber line you know like to pull equipment in and so they don't have to mess with the trees turn in the combine and stuff mm-hmm. um i'm thinking i might be able to be like hey we're gonna hunt this is it okay if we walk this buffer and that'd save us some and then it, we won't bump anything out that way yeah. if you go through the main piece i feel like if it's an evening hunt you potential to bump a lot of stuff out but uh not one of those pieces we have no idea what we're doing on nope. we're just gonna go in there sending it and i did see one stand on the whole entire thing and it's about five foot off the ground <laughs> and it looked and it grown into the tree like the straps were an inch into the tree Damn. the base was grown into the tree so I'm like, ah, oh, man, this is either someone that hunts this thing every day during the rut, you know what right, I mean? Right. Or he hasn't been there for two years, you know what I mean? So I'm banking on him not being there for that long with the way the sticks looked, the way the stand looked. He had two of the stick-together sticks separated. And you know how they have, like, the kickouts? Mm-hmm. Half the kickouts in the tree. I'm like, man, this thing's been here. Yeah, wow. For and it's in a cottonwood, so I'm like, man, this thing's been here for a long time. Yeah. And uh, I would be scared to climb it. The straps probably on the edge of busting. <laughs> well, it don't I mean? matter. The shit's growing in the tree. Yeah. So, <laughs> as long as a metal. Yeah. Hole. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I just that's the only stand I did. It is a decent spot, decent spot. Um, I don't know how he's accessing it, but um, I feel like it's someone that figured out that he could deer hunt it was like, I'll give it a shot. And then that probably hasn't been back, but might, might be full of deer hunters. I don't know, but nobody shed hunting it. I know that no cars on it, nothing like that. No trail cams. So, um, be a lot of bird hunters on it though. Yeah. So I don't know if the deer put up with that or not. We'll see. All right. said you wanted to hit something on the end. Yeah. So your dumbass been getting up for almost a month. And uh, going to the gym in the morning, doing a little exercising. Um, how, mu- how much weight you lost? 32 pounds. 32 pounds over the course of, well, basically two years. I've lost 65. So we're in pretty good shape. Yeah. And, I mean, I just had my birthday a week ago, and I turned 30, and I'm in the best shape of my adult life. Nice. So um, <clears throat> there was a time last April I thought I was probably maxed out where I was going to be, and then... Um, kind of let it go in the summer got back on it late summer into the fall going into deer season and packing around on public was you know it was fairly easy until we went deep you know but you know just going to all the bullshit spots we did that was that was really easy um so you've been hitting the gym hard and then here last week i started going in the mornings um still working out with the wife at night as well and um I'm going to try to gain some strength here for July and August and then September. Going to hit some cardio, try to do some bicycling, get ready and get in that kind of shape so we can get to the spots we need to when we need to and uh, be ready for that. So that's something to not overlook, I don't think, is to be in, you know, pretty decent shape if you're going to go hard. Um, I think one thing that really helps is the mental side of it, you know, because you're battling yourself every day. And if, if you cheat, if you cheat during, you know, exercising or dieting or, you know, whatever it is, it only affects you. It doesn't affect you, Cody. Mm-hmm. You know, it only affects me if I cheat, you know, if I have, you know, a handful of chips or, you know, and then a handful turns into three handfuls, you know. It's only going to um, set me back and it doesn't set you back. So that's one thing I really like about exercising and dieting is it's just a one-on-one battle with you. Get into that kind of um, mode and I really seen it help me, um, gr- you know, just grind it out. And, you know, when it gets through the rut, it's just to keep going. And um, because I'm used to battling myself every day, all day, you know, and yeah. I think that's something that um, gets overlooked quite often. I think it does, too. But for me, it was want to be in the best shape I can for my kids. And yeah. then 
Now, like, I used to have a ton of lower back pain. I got none. I feel the best I have. I weigh the same I weighed the senior in high school. I'm 28, and I feel like I could smash some stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel good. Like, if if you were like, ah, oh, let's go count this thing. We did 10 miles. They'd be like, okay. Like, today I did four miles, 90 degrees heat, and I carried 40 pounds on the way out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> carried, to, you know, something we'd left on the band there on the way out, and, yeah, I was ca- I was gassed, but it's different than last year, so. Yeah, so I'm probably, well, the lightest I was since I started trying to gain some strength is I was pr- probably six pounds heavier than I was when I graduated high school, but I'm carrying around probably about 10 pounds more muscle. Yeah. So, I mean, really, what am I? Like, I was down to 12% body fat. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was unbelievable to me you know when i started i had 33 yeah i had 74 pounds of body fat now i'm down to 19 yeah like get get with yeah, it you, you crush know? it dude man You're, so yeah i've been trying to do my part um yeah i and, told my wife this year i'm gonna hunt till my eyes bleed just so she knew how serious i was <laughs> yeah she said you're gonna hunt harder than when you hunted for freeze i said i'm gonna hunt harder than when i hunted for freeze yeah i thought i told a guy at work that too and he's like ain't no way i'm like I ain't playing around. No. No. I'm tired. It's, it's for real. I'm playing around. I don't know how many podcasts I've said that, but I'm serious. Like, I'm ready to – if season was tomorrow, I'm ready. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I like, most seasons, I'd be like, oh, no, I'm not I'm not ready. But yeah. I'm ready to go. Like, yep. I'm ready. If it to, was tomorrow, I'd just be like, oh, I wish I shot my bow a little bit more, yeah. but I'm ready. You You're going to do that in October. You're going to be like, man, I wish I shot my bow more. Yeah. Just, so something that – that's you the last step that probably. you got to have. You yeah. got to nail. You know what I mean? So – but it has been nice getting up in the morning and um, getting a workout in. It makes you feel really good. You get all the endorphins going, get a good pump. And, I mean, we've been going hard as shit at the gym. Yeah. I mean, we in there kidding around. a.m. for the last month I've been up. Yeah. So Like Jocko Williams out here, but just <laughs> way softer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, there's plenty of time left in the summer to get in shape and, you know, drop 10, 15 pounds if you need to and – get some cardio in and get serious about it and, and really start dialing in and thinking about your goals and what you want to attack and how you want to attack it and just have fun, man. Yeah. Like we were talking too, and not to carry on here, but you know, we were talking like I shot sunshine and then I had like a bullshit kind of rut because I messed up on opportunity, you know, and it just kind of weighs you down and like, what, like I was having fun, but it wasn't like if I if I would have shot sunshine, like then I would have been to You'd the be like, max. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, you know, I'd be like, hey, down. you know, then you would have hunt back there two days in mm-hmm. a row, you know, and then you would have been on Magnum or you know whatever, and it just would have been a whole better deal. And something I'm trying to do is eliminate all that bullshit. Yeah, I mean, because that's no fun. No. So you just got to go out there, have a positive mindset. Goes back to dieting and working out. If you have that mindset and you're just used to used to if you're going to, to battle if you're used to shit when shit happens you're, yeah, you're solid just, you know yeah, I'm I mean? rolling you're, like, you're like okay yeah. this is normal i'm normal this this is my normal life that's everybody everybody's like <laughs> or especially you I'm, I'm like dude if you hunt with me it's gonna be rocky the rest of your it, <laughs> shit's gonna be messed up this is how it is you yeah. know what i mean and I like my life a little I was, I'm not far off from yeah from it so, I'm like, so it's growing on you yeah <laughs> yeah i think becoming a dad of three <laughs> what you expected in the past is now like I can get by with this. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, but yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We rambled a little bit, but it's our podcast. We could do that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, we don't do it often. No, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get some more um, solid content coming for you guys. We got some awesome stuff lined up. Um, I wish the guy would have came on tonight that we had yeah, scheduled. Yeah, that been, thing's a giant. Would have been way better than this. <laughs> <laughs> but. uh Big shout out to you guys again. Um, you listen this long, dust talk. Um, you you are the reason that we get to do this, and uh, we say that not lightly. It's we appreciate you guys so much, and we've been getting a ton of messages lately. People are like, I've listened to you for two years, and I'm like, it just blows me away. Yeah. And people are finally reaching out. You know what I mean? And if you want to reach out. Don't be afraid to reach us out on you, Instagram or if something. You, if you don't think we're serious, like, meet us in person. Yeah. Like, I mean, we'll we shake the shit out of your hand. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it means a ton to us, um, and uh, we're growing this thing, and it's bigger than I thought it would be already, and I don't ever think it's going to be a full-time gig for us, but it's definitely 
I don't want it to end anytime soon. You know what I mean? So yeah. We're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep sending them out. Um, for you guys, always try to do the right thing. Leave a legacy. And White Tail Legacy is out. Until next Wednesday at 11 a.m. <laughs> Central Time. <laughs>